Howdy! The purpose of this video is to illustrate how to get up and running using Maud. Maud is an example of a XRD refinement software. It's one of a large number of uh, tools that we can use to do this, um, but this one's pretty user-friendly, uh, so we're going to learn the basics uh, using Maud. Um, ahead of time, uh, if you have not yet, go ahead and download uh, Maud. I'll show you the uh, website in a second, but you can certainly Google it. Uh, also, uh, obtain uh, and if necessary, convert uh, your XRD spectra, so the data you want to work with. Uh, and finally, um, obtain the initial CIF uh, file, uh, crystallographic information file. Um, so as with any other refinement software, um, we're not starting from scratch, but we are starting from a um, first guess of what the structure is, uh, and we refine it. So we uh, improve the um, different parameters of that crystal structure uh, using the data that we observe. Uh, okay, so uh, if you have not yet, uh, MOD can be downloaded uh, at this website. Um, and again, this is just one example of a refinement software. Uh, there are numbers out there. Um, this one has a couple advantages, one of which is it's Java-based, so it can be pretty easily used on both PC and Mac. Um, I should say that this is uh, this video is made using uh, Windows, um, so if you have a Mac version, things might look a little bit different. Um, but uh, you know the main uh, operations are there somewhere. You just have to find the right buttons. Um, also, uh, we are using uh, Mod 2.67. Uh, that's the current version uh, at the time of uh, making this video. So again, uh, if you have a more recent version or an older version. Um, things might look a little bit different, but the same uh, general tools will be there uh, somewhere in the video. Um, as for a SIF file, uh, there are a number of places to get these, uh, but one of the, the biggest um, is called the crystallographic, uh, Crystallography Open Database. Uh, and this is basically a repository of um, a very large number, so almost half a million um, crystallographic information files. And so this is basically a format that we use to, um, uh, to um, convey and store information describing a crystal structure. Uh, so it's pretty easy to come here to say search, um, and the uh, file, uh, the x-ray data that we're going to be working with today uh, is from quartz. So we could uh, search for the word quartz, um, look for a SIF file. Um, and uh, it's important to note that there are many other uh, structures that apparently are isostructural to quartz, but we actually have uh, SiO2. Um, and so the file that we want uh, to start off with, uh, any of these will do. This is quartz, um, and it, uh, uh, it has a SiO2 structure. Uh, so simply clicking or right-clicking and downloading uh, on this uh, will give you the CIF file. Um, and so it's worth looking at this quickly. Uh, so I've already downloaded this for, uh, for the example we're working with today. Uh, and we can open it in any kind of a text editor, SIFs or ASCII files, um, just to look at the information that is inside. Uh, so this is just telling me where and when I downloaded it from. The first bit of data is metadata. So this is um, all of these um, structures that are on Open Crystallography Database or on any other database. Are, are usually taken directly from the literature. So there's some uh, journal uh, name, some paper, um, some journal page associated uh, with this x-ray pattern. Um, so everything here up is basically all metadata. Um, the next bit of thing, information in here talks about the chemistry and the name of the phase. Um, so this is silicon oxide alpha quartz. This is the stable form of quartz over a large range of pressure and temperature. Uh, the next uh, lines are talking about the space group of the structure. Um, so these are, you know, this is the, the cell setting, but all of these other things are basically just different names for the space group. So there's the International Crystallographic Table Number, uh, number 152, um, but that's uh, the same as the Herman McGinn um, notation, P37121. Um, so these are just different ways to say the space group of the phase we're going to be looking at today. Um, now, because this is a hexagonal lattice, uh, you know, the alpha and beta and gamma angles are all defined ahead of time, and so we're not going to be able to refine those at all. Um, so those are 90, 90, 120. 
Um, uh, I should note that uh, because this is an older file uh, from 1935, apparently gamma uh, is 120 uh, degree angle. This changes sometimes. Uh, the convention changes over time. Um, the other thing uh, is the lattice parameter. So again, A equals B for hexagonal structure, um, and C uh, is a different length. Um, so they've gone ahead and calculated the volume and the density um, based on all of this information. So everything in here are the lattice parameters describing the unit cell. And these are things that we're going to refine and allow to change slightly using mod. Um, the, uh, the next bit of information uh, is talking about the symmetry of the, of the general position. So if I have one atom at a position x, y, z, where else will I find it in the lattice? Uh, and then everything from here on down is just describing what are the atoms that are actually in this lattice. Um, and so in quartz, I have two atoms. I have silicon, um, and this one's named silicon 1, uh, formerly with a plus 4 charge. Uh, 3A is the Wyckoff position that this uh, um, uh, silicon uh, atom is sitting at. Uh, so 3 is the multiplicity, A is the uh, Wyckoff symbol. Um, the uh, position in terms of fractional coordinates is given by these three numbers, so 0 0.465, 0, and 0 0.33333. Um, so that is the uh, fractional coordinate position of the silicon atom. Uh, occupancy um, is given as one, and so that means on that particular site, every site is occupied by a silicon atom. Uh, sometimes you have um, some sites are occupied, some are not. Sometimes you can have more than one atom occupying a certain site with, with some given um, ratio of chemistry. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to kind of ignore the last couple things. They're not important for the purpose of this. Um, so uh, that describes silicon, and we have same data for oxygen as well. So this is the starting point. So this is the um, refined structure that somebody else has provided for the sample that they looked at. Um, based on the phase that we're uh, dealing with, we might expect that to change a little bit, or may maybe we're expecting it to be pretty similar. Um, and so, um, again, I, uh, we're doing a standard material here, and so we would expect it to come out to be pretty similar in the end. Um, but that's our starting point coming in. So I already have uh, the SIF file that we're going to use for this example, and I have um, the uh, X-ray data as well. And it's already been converted into a format that can be read uh, by mod. Um, so if you haven't done this yet, uh, the, you know certain formats are readable, certain are not, and so you might need a um, converter utility to go from whatever you capture on your X-ray system. Uh, to a format that mod can digest. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up mod at this point. Uh, the file that you use to open it is mod.bat. So Windows calls thinks it's a Windows batch file, but it's not. It's uh, something um, that's associated with, uh, with Java, and so it opens up just fine. Um, so this is the basic program. And again, I just want to get you up and running. Um, right now, so we're going to do only the most basic of things. I'll have a separate video that's walking through your first uh, attempt to refine. Um, so the first thing we need to do is bring in data. Um, so we have our X-ray spectra, uh, and because mod is pretty user-friendly, all we have to do is drag. This is the data file I'm going to use, uh, and drop it uh, in here. And we can see that it already um, has interpreted it and knows what to do uh, with that data. Um, so I can zoom in on any of these peaks just by uh, clicking one corner and dragging. Um, and if I double click, that brings me back uh, to the original view. Uh, if I go up at this region, um, up here right around 68 degrees, uh, this is a ring region that's known as the five fingers region of quartz um, because we see one, two, three, four, five points. And it's, and it's used sometimes to look at the resolution of your x-ray uh, machine because... Uh, we, um, in this case, we can clearly resolve all five of these peaks. If we have a lower resolution instrument, uh, they're going to stop to blur together. I can also right click and say reset scale, and that brings me back here. Um, so this is the data, the x-ray data that I'm going to work with. And the next thing I need to do is bring in a phase, or that is, um, what is the uh, starting guess of what I'm trying to refine? And again, um, that was the .cif file. And so I can drag and drop 
and I'm going to bring it right here into the phases box. Uh, and when I do that, a little uh, um, window pops up and uh, there's only one phase associated with this uh, CIF file. So I highlight it and I select choose and it has been brought in OK. Um, so any of these, if I want to look at uh, the data set or the phase, um, I highlight it and I click the eyeball here uh, and it gives me a bunch of information. So for the SAO2 phase, here are our lattice parameters. Um, here's the space group, uh, the symmetry, um, atom uh, atomic position, so different atoms and where they're sitting in the lattice occupancy, all that information. Similarly, if I go over to data sets uh, and I click on the eyeball, um, it has a bunch of uh, different information. There's information about the instrument. Um, there's information um, about the data files. So we just brought that one file in um, and a number of other things. So I have my data in, uh, I have a phase loaded. Um, the main things that we're gonna be doing uh, are involve these top three buttons uh, on uh, right under the, um, the file heading. So this leftmost is a wizard. It kind of does a bunch of automated steps. Uh, the middle one computes a spectra for the particular phase as it's defined at the moment. And the final one, uh, sometimes it looks like a hammer to me and sometimes it looks like a, I don't know, a slot machine or cash register or something. I, I'm not really sure. Um, but this is uh, the button that you click to actually perform a refinement. So based on what you've um, defined as being fixed or what you're allowing to refine, um, various things are going to start to converge on a better estimate to make the model fit the data. So the first thing I want to do is click Calculate. Um, and this is uh, going to generate a couple new things that we haven't seen yet. Remember, all of these red circles, this was our observed data pattern. Uh, and the first new thing is a bunch of red lines um, that are the calculated model for the particular phase and all the inf other information that we have um, defined in the system right now. Um, the other thing that has popped up that we see, and this is gonna be really useful, is what's called the difference plot. And so this is just the difference between the observed data, the dots, um, and the uh, model, so the red data points. Um, so right now, um, the first thing that we wanna look at is have we, um, does the particular pattern generate peaks about where I would expect to see them? And so in my, uh, um, in my measured data, I see a peak. Um, I see a large dash and a small dash. I'll talk about what those mean uh, shortly. Um, and, and the red uh, model thing is associated with those dashes. So this is saying, yes, it's, it's identifying a peak in about the right uh, region. And I can look at higher two thetas and I see uh, the same thing. Um, and so I can come all the way up here and I see some peaks associated with these five fingers. So I find peaks, but the intensity is not at all matching up right now. So the very first thing that we do uh, in any refinement is to adjust the scale. So it linearly scales all the intensity and to, to refine for the background. Um, and we can use that um, using this refinement window, uh, refinement wizard button, so the light bulb. Uh, and we're going to leave it checked at background and scale parameters and say go. Um, and we can see already it has increased the background, so it's doing a much better job of fitting that overall. The peaks are starting to scale. There's still a lot of work to do. Our peak shape doesn't look anything like uh, that observed peak shape. Um, intensities are kind of off, but it's off in part because the peak shape is such a bad match. Um, but the most important thing at this point is that I do indeed see peaks um, and in our model wherever we see peaks that are observed. So that means I'm on the right track um, and I would start my refinement from here. So this is all the basics you need to get started. Um, I'm going to have a second video that is uh, talking about just the refinement step. Um, but uh, this is uh, the basics of how we get up and running using mod. Um, I should say that at any point you can say save analysis and so you can come back to that um, at a later point. Um, so, uh, yep. Um, okay, uh, signing off and uh, next watch the other video that's talking about how to proceed with the refinement.